those blades are special order, so. Seriously, if you break one on accident, what do we do? That's done for this trip. What a difference. We've now exposed these huge trees that I didn't even know were back here. I just, I love it. <laughs> this week was a rough one because Spencer had his very first run-in with poison ivy. With all of the road work and landscaping he's been doing, it was bound to happen eventually. But the poison ivy wasn't even the bad part. It was when it became infected. In the 10 years we've been together, he's been to the doctor one time. So when he expressed how badly he was feeling and said he thought he should go to the doctor, I knew it was serious. What started out as just the oozing, itchy rash was quickly followed by other symptoms. It became very red and inflamed and he started having the chills, skin numbness, and became lethargic and extremely fatigued. Are you doing okay? Uh, could be better. Not too bad at the moment. It's weird seeing you not feel well. It's weird not feeling well. I mean, it's covered in calamine right now, but... Right, this is not the... Three, two... You just got a shot in your butt. <laughs> Sorry. Ow. <laughs> now I'm starting to feel it. You took it like a champ, babe. No, the, the needle wasn't the thing. It's like the, the fluid yeah. inside now. <laughs> Man, I would love to be the nurse that gets to give you a shot in the butt. <laughs> like I can see this hot guy's booty right now. <laughs> oh god! Poison ivy, man. The poison ivy sucked, but I think it's the infection. The infection. Right, yeah, obviously. It really made it worse. Bacterial infections are no joke. Those little animals. What? <laughs> Bacteria. <laughs> After getting some medicine in him, he started to quickly feel a lot better. Within just a few hours, he seemed like his normal self again. And I'm really glad we took care of this when we did because the next day we would be having some very special visitors coming. Spencer's mom and stepdad were coming to see the land and to get to visit with us and the kids. So the last thing we would have wanted was for him to be feeling so badly with them here. All right, today is the day. Let the cabin site clearing begin. And we have some help. Spencer is putting his stepdad to work. Gonna have him start cutting down some trees. And grandma is watching the kids. So this is uh, very, very unusual for us. We're not used to ever having help. And I gotta say, it's quite nice. <laughs> all night you gotta find your people the ones that make you feel whole they won't leave your side when you lose control the ones that don't let you lose your soul you gotta find your people the ones get the I can't believe how different it already looks. And what's that back there? You're uncovering so many things. I'm not sure. It's a, I don't know farm equipment very well. I don't know if that's a planter or a cedar. I'm sure one of you guys know. So I gotta say, it is pretty terrifying going back into this area just because one, there's all this rubble that you don't really know if there's anything underlying, but there's a lot of rock also. Don't want to hit that. <laughs> I'm going extremely slow into it, making sure I don't hit anything. Don't break the cutter. I know, I'm on my last blades. I've gone through all my replacement blades. Those blades are special order, so. 
Seriously, if you break one on accident, what do we do? Are we done? It's done for this trip. Okay, no pressure. <laughs> It was so nice for us to have some quality time with some family because as much as we absolutely love what we do, I'd be lying if I said I didn't get lonely sometimes. We miss our family and friends so much, but that being said, building your dream doesn't come without sacrifices, and for us, this unfortunately has been one of them. So getting to share this time and this place with some family was a really special moment for us. With building our home, having two babies, and pursuing this land, it feels like the last five years flew by in the blink of an eye. So we're really trying to make a conscious effort to plan more things with family and friends. After all, all of this is pointless if we don't have the people we love to share it with. You gotta find your people, the ones that make you feel alright. Tell you the truth and wish you well. You gotta find the people, then you find yourself. All right, it's time to get these tires out of here. I can't believe we forgot our snake stick. So we've been out here for about two, close to three weeks now. And I just wanted to go over how we're doing our water sit situation. There's a creek that runs through the property and it's not next to us. It's actually on the other side of the property. So what I'm doing in order to get the water back is I just take that uh, brand new trash can. <laughs> I know as funny as that sounds. I suck it out of the creek into the trash can and then haul it back and then from there i'll pump it out of the trash can run it through a charcoal filter and then pump it into the camper and again that is only for showering washing dishes stuff like that it's not for drinking or cooking or anything like that all right so this is our setup it's just a five gallon bucket that i drilled a bunch of holes into to allow water to come in and uh, keep as much sediment out as possible. And there's no holes at the very bottom of it, so I'm not sucking the, the creek bed itself up. And then the rock is just down there to help weigh the bucket down, because I, I found that even with the pump in it, it wants to kind of like float away. So that helps keep it down. And then the other thing is, when you place it down into the creek, you want to place it gently down in there to disturb as the least amount of sediment as possible. And that's that. And then from here, I'll run an extension cord and the hose up to the truck.
What a difference. Yeah, seriously. It looks so much better. It's so crazy because when we saw this spot and I was trying to envision how it was all going to look, like the actual usable building site that we have here is so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, just imagine you just trim the bush a little bit and it just really springs to life. <laughs> you just said that the weirdest one I've had in the world. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, like there's so much more flat space up here than I thought there was and the rock wall Continues all the way to the mountainside and it's just it's so pretty. Yeah Now I wonder how much of this was flattened by the people who used to live here You know or how much of this is just kind of natural and then they just use the rock wall to build up a little bit of additional retaining mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of rock on the property and it looks like they did push a lot of the rock up into piles against tr large trees and stuff like that. Right. So, and that rock's been there for a, a minute. The other thing that I love about this is, I mean, I was really nervous about starting to cut some trees. It, they're very small trees that we're cutting, but I don't know, I was really worried that it would just leave this whole area very exposed. No, no Cam. I wanted it to, obviously retain that foresty feel and you feel like you are just surrounded by it all, which can be scary when you have to start cutting small trees out, which is obviously necessary. But all of this to say, I mean, it, it looks a million times better. <laughs> and I am pleasantly surprised with how the canopy looks. Like it's totally covered with the branches and the leaves yeah, still. And it also helped those more established trees stay more established and the ones that are bigger. Yeah. Right. No, I know. Again, I know it's necessary and it's it's all good to do, but just like when you start doing it, it makes me nervous. Yeah. You know. Cutting big trees is the one. Oh no. Yeah. And I think that's the other thing too. Starting to cut all of the smaller tiny trees, we've now exposed these huge trees that I didn't even know were back here. Right. Because it was so thick. I just I love it. After they had started, I left to go get food, and when I came back, I couldn't believe how different it looked. You guys did a good job. And you're not even done. Like, there's still so much work to be done here, but it already looks so much better. I can just envision it all. Too bad I don't have my uh, free labor <laughs> anymore. I know, it was nice having help, <laughs> that's for sure. Kind of hard to see, but that right there is a copperhead. Can't seem to get away from these things. Mm -hmm. All right, so obviously everything is subject to change, but what we're kind of thinking is imagine the container cabin along here somewhere. We just have so much more space now to use, so I'm not quite sure how far back we're going to go, but the container cabin and then the large deck on this side. Right, babe? A large what? Deck. Large what? Yeah. The large deck on this side going up to that beautiful rock wall. That's kind of what we're thinking at the moment. Rainwater catchment on top, the solar power out in that field, that's where the panels will be. And yeah, I think it's gonna be perfect. That's a very rough plan, but that is the current plan. <laughs> and obviously we're gonna get all of this rubble out of here. <laughs> Can you imagine the number of snakes that are gonna come out of there? So, I'm pretty sure this is where the home site was, which makes total sense why the rubble pile's right there. You can kind of see a big rectangle. It wasn't very big. It, I mean, this place was probably, I don't know, 800 square feet or so it looks like. Granted, I don't know if there's any, any extra uh, stories to it, a second story or anything, but big square foundation or rectangle foundation and it makes sense now. Pretty cool. I wish I knew more about this place, but there's little to know. So there's still a lot of uh, work to be done up here at the cabin site, but the road I really need to focus on because we're trying to get some gravel brought in and there's still a little bit work to be done. So I'm gonna put all my focus there now that I don't have any more free labor. Free labor is welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so with the road I still have some uh, trimming to do with small trees and some overhanging branches and 
some grading. Grading, I would say, is about 75% done, but still got some more of that to do. We'll leave it all behind. Won't stop till the finish line. We'll go together on the sofa. Oh, baby.